Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to do a awesome MCAT question, which I particularly enjoy because it came straight from a paper, because uh, I was reading this paper. So let's go ahead and uh, answer this one. It says, which of the following is false? Different cells harbor different genomes, different cells harbor ep different epigenomes, different cells harbor different transcriptomes, and last but not least, different cells harbor different proteomes. And uh, E is none of the above. I know none of the above is usually like a bailout answer choice, but nonetheless it's important. So the concept we're thinking about here is types of genomes, and specifically the types of genomes within a cell, within one cell, not just the different types of genomes across species, but within one cell. Um, before we do that, it's important for you to understand there are a variety of cells in your body. If you look at the right-hand uh, side of this, you know you start as a zygote, and that zygote turns into a morula, which turns into a blastocyst, and that blastocyst eventually becomes pretty much liver cells, pancreatic cells, intestinal cells, neurons, blood cells, muscle cells, and you know all of these cells have a different structure and function, but they nonetheless come from the same place. So the question here, even though it's saying which of the following is false, is essentially asking you what part of cells is the part that makes them different? Is it the um, genome, the epigenome, transcriptome, or proteome? You know, that's the overall simplified question. So if we now think about these, let me now explain to you the different types of genomes. We're going to go through them as what they are mentioned, as how they are mentioned in this question. As I already mentioned to you, you start as one cell, one cell called a zygote. A zygote is a fertilized cell. When the egg and sperm meet, they form a zygote. So the zygote has a genome in it. And the genome is basically all the genes, and genes are basically the things that are in your DNA. And, you know, that if you're an organism, you have genes in the nucleus. You also have genes in the mitochondria. Uh, and the other part that sometimes a lot of students get wrong is we can't just think that we're thinking of a human here. I mean, I granted that this is thinking of a human, but sometimes you also think of our other organisms, and they could have chloroplasts, and chloroplasts also have genomes. So nonetheless, just know that that's what the whole genome means. Um, each genome, at least if we're talking just about humans, so let's say we didn't take chloroplasts into consideration, the genome is the part that's mostly in the nucleus. Most of the genes are in the nucleus, and it's about 3 billion base pairs long. But the funny part is you have two copies of your genome. You get one genome from your mom and one genome from your dad, which is why you have two pairs of 23 chromosomes. And that gives you a total of um, 6 billion base pairs that are part of your genome. And the great part is that genome initially started out in the zygote, and that zygote went on to form all of these things. So believe it or not, that genome will stay the same for all the cells, and I'm going to reiterate that here. So think about it, right? Your fertilization, your one cell, and eventually by the time an embryo slash fetus is born, you have a, a massive organism that has 26 billion cells. So you start with one cell, and you end with 26 billion, and the fact is that one cell had to divide multiple times, if you wanted to do the math, I'm sure you could, uh, to get to 26 billion. So, But at the end of the day, because all of these 26 billion came from the same place, they all have the same genome. That is, they have all the same 6 billion base pairs from one cell to another cell. So the fact is, if these all have the same genome, how are they different? How do you still get a muscle cell? How do you still get a red blood cell? How do you get a neuron? How do you get all these different types of cells if their um, you know, blueprint is the same? It's kind of like saying, if you have the same Legos, uh, how do you build these different organisms? And um, in this case, let's think about it. They are, there's all these other genomes that I'm going to show you that are responsible. Um, and at this point, the answer is probably obvious to you. But nonetheless, it's important to learn about these other things. So what is the transcriptome? The transcriptome is the set of all of the mRNA molecules in a cell. And the transcriptome, as you can tell, is the um, transcriptome. So transcript refers to mRNA. And mRNA, um, I want you to re remember, is the central dogma tells us that mRNA is made from DNA, right? It's in the process of transcription. And the crazy part is I just told you that DNA is, same, DNA is the same as all, in all cells. But the part that's going to be different now is the mRNA. Because just because you have the same DNA in every cell does not mean you will always have the same RNA. Because RNA may or may not be translated. I mean transcript, transcribed from the same gene. So let me show you this picture here. You'll see that in a certain, in a certain cell, you might transcribe certain RNA molecules, but in another cell, you might tra not transcribe them. So the transcriptome is actually something that varies from one cell to the next. Um, that's just something that is responsible for differentiation. You might be wondering, how would that even be possible? Why are different RNA molecules transcribed even though the DNA is the same? Why does that happen? 
well, now we're going to get into this thing that I like to call the epigenome, and so do a lot of other scientists. And the reason why different uh, mRNAs are made in different cells is because of the epigenome. And the epigenome um, is described right here on the right side of your screen. Is chemical changes to DNA slash histones. Uh, you know, if you don't know what histones are, they're the proteins around which the DNA is wound. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, I'm going to highlight it in green. This is a transcript. I mean, not a. <laughs> this is a histones. Uh, the group, the the bluish things are the histones, and the purple is the DNA wound around the histones. So chemical changes to the DNA slash histones affect their activity. So it could be DNA or histones, right? And so it's kind of like saying, you know, you have the same basics, right? The DNA is the same in every cell, but sometimes the DNA is changed, not physically, but sometimes you'll add something onto the DNA that increases its activity or decreases it. So think about it this way. Sometimes you can add methyl groups to DNA, and the methyl groups will actually cause the DNA to be wound more tightly around itself, and that's why sometimes it will repress genes. Usually methyl groups are associated with the repression of genes. The other thing you can also have is the acetyl groups. Usually acetyl groups are associated with an increase in activity because acetyl groups cause the DNA to spread out more. When you spread out more, you're more likely to get transcription happening because the enzymes can get to the DNA more quickly. So that is the epigenome. The epigenome are chemical changes to the DNA slash histone, not the actual sequence chain of the DNA. The sequence of the DNA stays the same, but the epigenome refers to the fact that the, the modifications to DNA can change. And that ultimately leads to different activity of the DNA. So now, I've told you the epigenome contributes to the transcriptome, but I have not yet talked about this thing called the proteome. Uh, but the proteome is going to make a lot more sense, because if cells have different transcriptomes, which I, I told you they do because they have different mRNAs, and they have different transcriptomes because they have different epigenomes, um, then they ha also have unique proteomes, because proteomes are basically the entire class of proteins that a certain cell makes. And in this case, if you're already making different types of mRNA in each cell, you know, like if you're a heart cell, you'll transcribe certain transcripts. If you're a, um, a muscle cell, you'll transcribe certain transcripts. That, that also means that you'll have a different proteome because you already have a different uh, transcriptome. And what that also means is that unique cells will have a unique proteome. All right? So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, believe it or not, um, different cells do harbor different epigenomes, different cells do harbor different transcriptomes, and different cells do harbor different proteomes, but believe it or not, at the end of the day, every single cell has the same genome. So the part that's false here is A. Every single cell has the same genome, but the reason they differentiate into different things is because they have different epigenomes, transcriptomes, and proteomes. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. If you want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.